I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rekakwadash. Double honors unto our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, Wakasatyam, Wabarakim, peace, mercy, and blessings unto the Bayasha Dawada, the house of David, to the elders, to the brothers, to the hopeful elect. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, which means he exists or he is to be. The true name of the Son <coughs> is Yahweh Shai, which means he is the deliverer. We are the Hebrew Israelites, which consist of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Seminole Indians, okay, Latin Hispanics. But we actually make up the lost 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. The so-called white man is not white, he's red. They're the Idumeans, the Edomites, according to the Bible. Okay, they're the serpent. They're the uh, the dragon. Okay, the, the I, Idumeans. Okay. And pretty much they're the devil, you know. And um, what you can see, you know, I had a title for the lesson. Salaki is kind of late. No, but the spirit is on me. <clears throat> the title for this lesson will be The Coming Collapse Will Make the Great Depression Look Like a Joke. You know, and what inspired the name of this lesson, it came from this movie, American Refugee. Okay, and what this movie depicts is the collapse of America. Okay, the collapse of the stock market, the collapse of the, uh, of the dollar. Okay, looting. A man not having pity upon his neighbor. Home invasions. You know, Jacob's trouble. All right. Martial law. All hell break the loose shit. All hell breaking loose shit. Hit the fam. Okay. Now I'm not gonna pray to play the uh, trailer because I don't want to get hit. You know, you know, you know, for anything I want you know to take the video down, but. You can actually watch this on Amazon Prime. This, you know, if you have that, it, you don't have to pay for it. It's actually free on there, you know. But really, you know, from watching the movie, <clears throat> I didn't even fin the whole, finish the whole movie and how to do a lesson on it. Don't get me wrong. It's, you know, it's a decent movie. You know, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a must watch, but there's definitely some Jews in there. Now, don't get me wrong. They rated 3.9 out of 10. It's not as bad as they rated because <clears throat> us being a hopeful elect, like, you know, knowing the knowledge of the scriptures that we have, we can we can pull the meat out of it that needs to be pulled out of it. And pretty much what it's depicting is Jacob's trouble. OK, it's called Jacob's trouble for a reason. Now, in this movie, you know, this this will be um, a spoiler alert. You know, so if you haven't watched it and you want to watch it, then, hey, just go watch it. And then, you know, if you want to come back for the edification, then come back and watch the video. <clears throat> okay, so pretty much, you know, there's a family of Israelites, you know, well off. I believe the wife is a doctor, husband. You know, he's, I believe he has some job in like the uh, stock market or whatever they have. Three children, right? One's actually um, adopted. The adopted child doesn't speak, you know, lost his mother at birth. You know, his oldest child is a, is a daughter. She's a teenager, you know, and I believe his youngest child is a girl, too. I'm not sure, you know, I, um, I don't remember right now. But anyway, his youngest child is like a like a six month old, you know, very little infant, you know. So anyway, they have three children, you know, it showed you how, you know, Jake be having trouble in the flesh, <laughs> you know, with, with, with this woman, okay, I believe the, the wife's sister, which the sister, I remember her name, her name is Brooke, you know, she came to uh, visit, she came from out of town or whatever, to visit um, the family of Israelites on the ranch, you know, they have a, like a private home, you know, not in the city, pretty much they have their own land, they have chickens and everything, <clears throat> you know, and um, what ended up happening is that, you know, one day, 
you know, they woke up and shit changed. Okay, and that's that's exactly what's going to happen to these people out here, man. One day you're going to wake up and you, the times that we have now, people are going to, you know, have wet dreams about these times in the near future, man. Okay, because there's going to be blackouts. Okay, there's not going to be any heating. You don't have to start a fire for heat, for for warmth. There's not going to be any food in the shelves. And uh, Okay, on the shelves in these stores, people are going to be at one another's throats for the bare necessities, man. Okay. So pretty much what it showed you, man, is that how Jake is not prepared for what's coming. Okay. And the only way to prepare is to uh, is to pray that you're part of the elect. Because no amount of stocking up can save you. No amount of guns and ammo, okay? <clears throat> None of that can save you. Because at the end of the day, you can have the shelter. You can have the fallout shelter or the bunker and the food stocked up and the guns and the ammo. So well, guess what? The nukes are still coming. Okay? And you have Bashimi out shy, he can allow a pack of raiders or cannibals to stumble upon you and just fuck your shit up, man. Okay, have you go out very horribly. Okay. And that's the time that we're coming into, man. Coming into some very, very miserable times. <clears throat> You know, in the movie, it showed you uh, the the the, the, the B dub, you know, being careless, just like they always fucking careless. You know, the the main characters, uh, I believe his name is Greg. I don't remember his wife's name. You know, but the main character, the Jake, his name is uh, Greg. Okay, his sister in law, Brooke. You know, came to his house to see his wife or whatever, and she left. But when she, upon leaving, she dropped her phone, and she didn't realize that she had dropped her phone. Okay, so when she, and they and mind you, Greg urged her to stay. <laughs> you know, he pressed upon her to stay, which is the custom of the Israelites in the ancient world. If you were by someone's house, you know, if you were staying over someone's house, you know, you were under that person's roof. It was it was like a duty for them to protect you and an honor for them to house you. You see, but she wanted to go back home in the city where the chaos was, where the collapse had started, where people were breaking in cars, where people were raping, robbing, murdering, looting. Okay, she wanted to go back to her apartment so she can live her life. Okay, and Greg ended up going to get her. And what happened? Some robbers wanted her car. Okay, she didn't want to get out and they shot her ass. <laughs> okay. Just like that. And this is how the movie starts off. Okay, starts off with judgment on a uh, careless woman. The collapse of, of the dollar. Okay, shit hitting the fan. And this is what's coming. This is Second Edges chapter 8 and verse 50. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. They had the pride of life. You know, the, the, these people, they pride themselves off their uh, social media accounts. Okay, they pride themselves off, off how many likes and, you know, comments and, and shares and, you know, all of these things that they can get. They take pride in that. Okay, these are the same people that's going to lose their fucking mind when they can't find their phone. That's what that's what happened to that, you know, that B-Dub Brooke in the movie. She was losing her mind because she can't find her phone. And, and in the midst of that, she ended up getting her fucking head blowed off. Okay? So that's what's going to happen to a wicked-ass woman, man. Okay? And we get on here to tell you to repent. To come back into your heart by Shem Shai Because evil days are here. We can no longer say they're coming. They're here. This is from naturalnews.com. I don't even have to go into any of these articles. I can just read the headlines. Okay, and you can see right here, May 11th, meat prices in America could reach highest level in generations. So what do you think is going to happen? Okay, people going to start hitting, going up in these stores and taking whatever the fuck they want. Okay, 
Because when people have nothing to lose, <laughs> what's going to stop them from going up in the store and to feed themselves and their family? <laughs> it ain't going to take long for shit to pop off, man. The price of gas is going back up. It showed you that in, in the show. The price of gas, the stock market dropping. Oh, medicine is going to be a very big thing. You know, especially women that are pregnant, which that's been the reason too. The uh, the the shortage of uh, formula, baby formula, infant meal, and that sort of thing. <clears throat> okay, because that's what's coming too, man. When this shit happens, you ain't gonna just go be able to go to the pharmacy. The pharmacist ain't gonna be there. They're going to leave. The pharmacy is gonna close early, so people ain't gonna be able to get their medicine. People are gonna die. Pregnant women that don't have the proper care for them to, uh, you know, midwives and, you know, things of that nature. They, and to help them deliver that baby, guess what? They're going to die. If they do deliver the baby, they don't have the proper, you know, if they can't, they don't have the patience to breastfeed or they don't have any formula or know how to make formula, their child is going to die. This is second edge of 6 and 22. And suddenly... Shall the sown places appear unsown? This is what's happening. This is what's happening all over America. There's droughts, lakes, river streams are drying up. You know, uh, fields are uh, what's these uh, droughts are causing wildfires. Okay, so animals are are dying. Okay, crops aren't. You know, crops are uh, <clears throat> not what they used to be. There's a plague upon the, upon the land, okay, and 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 guess what? That's going to affect your supermarkets. How the guy, the price of diesel, is going to affect the products getting to the supermarkets, man. So shit is about to get real, okay. It is going to be a very very hot summer, and a very 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 cold winter. Which out around Rotterdam, we ain't here that long. The full storehouses shall be suddenly found empty. These stores, these pharmacies, okay, it's going to get to the point where people are going to break in them shits, take everything, and it's going to be found empty. It's going to get to the point where people are going to have to go shopping in your house, man. Okay? So pretty much, and, that, and that's what happened. You know, going back to the movie American uh, Refugee with the Jake, uh, Greg, and his family, you know, so he pretty much makes it back to the house, you know, to tell his wife that his, her sister didn't make it, and she faints. <laughs> you see? And mind you, did he have time to bury Brooke? Fuck no. He, she, she got shot. He had to get up out of there. He had to dip. And that's what the scripture says, man. <laughs> you don't have time to bury nobody. His body shall be as dung upon the face of the earth, man. Think is a game. Think yeah, how about Shimmy I was shy? It's plain. You know? And brothers all over are making these videos. Why? Because hey, it's here. Call Lo Yah about Shimmy I was shy. This is Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 1. The word of Yahweh about Shimmy I was shy came also unto me, saying, And man, this is the spirit. <laughs> this is the spirit. Thou shalt not take thee a wife, neither shalt thou have sons or daughters in this place. Okay? Now, that's not to say that a brother is going off if, you know, if he has a, a, a wife and children. Okay? Because the scriptures does say that men, women, and children will be delivered. And that women that are pregnant will be delivered and their baby. You see, but if you're not at the end of the day, if you're not part of the Hobba Shem Yoshai's elect, okay, <laughs> even if you are part of the elect, man, you just keeping it real with you, you could lose your family members. They the most I could take them out, you know, but hey, you get them back in the kingdom. But unto the wicked, these people are going to lose their wife, their, their children in a very horrible fashion. <laughs> Okay, so the reason the Lord told Jeremiah not to take a wife because he, cause he knew that the Babylonians was coming to ransack Jerusalem. And when that happened, the Edomites and the other nations partook in the ransacking of the besieged destruction of Jerusalem in the temple. 
You see, Jeremiah had escaped escaped to Egypt. You see, but putting our time and linking up with this movie, my man Greg, he had the you know so called American dream, house, land, wife, you know, children. Okay, and one day <laughs> it it all came to nothing. It says. For thus said Jehovah Shimei Hoshai concerning the sons and concerning the daughters that are born in this place and concerning their mothers that bear them and concerning their fathers that begot them in this land, they shall die of grievous deaths. People are going to watch their loved ones die in these coming times. Okay. And they shall not be lamented. Lamenting. If you lament for something, you're, uh, you're crying. Your morning. Neither shall they be buried, but they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth, and they shall be consumed by the sword, which is by uh war, okay? Whether it be martial law, whether it be the UN troops, whether it be you know, this or that, okay? And by famine, which that famine is here, okay? And their carcasses shall be meat for the fowls of heaven. And for the beasts of the earth. Okay. Now going back to the movie. It got to a point man. Where shit got so bad. You know one night people actually broke into. uh, Greg's house. Okay. Actually let me back up a little bit. You know. Because it says. Follows a family seeking shelter. In their neighbor's bunker. Okay. So prior to the night. Of the people breaking in, right? The scripture says a man should have no pity upon his neighbor. Okay, they pretty much broke in the house, ransacked everything, took everything that was valuable. They they made it out of the house by the skin of their teeth. You know, and they had to live in the in the wilderness for a night. But prior to that, you know, the the wife went to the pharmacy earlier that day. You know, <clears throat> before everything fully kicked off, like one of the beginning, beginning scenes, the wife went to the pharmacy to grab some supplies, and she ran into this woman, okay, and just for face value, this Edomite woman named Amber, who who was pregnant, and she was pretty much panicking, because she, you know, everything was gone, and she didn't know what, if the stuff that was left is what she can use to help get her through this pregnancy, okay, so the Jake woman was pretty much breaking everything down to her. Okay. So after the place was robbed and, uh, you know, before the place was robbed, Amber, you know, sent pretty much her son or stepson, whatever, you know, which Amber's husband, his name is uh, Hunter. And this is the family who owns the bunker. This is the Edomite family who owns the uh, bunker, man. Okay. And this is Amber right here. Okay. So it's Amber, Hunter. They own this bunker because cause there's been prepping. Okay. It's not Esau prepping. Do now you have like a, a million fucker prepping channels on YouTube. Okay, guess what? People in your neighborhood are prepping and they're, and they're watching everything and they're watching everyone who lives around them. And you and you better bet your ass that they are identifying Israelites as the enemy. <laughs> and if they can't use you, right, as it says in Sirach, see if he can use you, he'll, ask, he'll use you. If not, he will kill you. Okay, so they went to get Amber because the wife was having complications giving birth. <clears throat> and they just tried to take her alone. But then Greg said, man, you're not just taking my wife nowhere. You know, so they go to show you, man. <laughs> People are just going to be took. If you have some type of skill, you know, you're a doctor, you're a carpenter, you know how to fix things. <laughs> okay. People are going to take you in and put your ass to work. Okay. If you get out of line, they're going to kill you. They may, they may even eat you. Before that, they may even... You know, sexually assault you a, a, a couple of times. <laughs> okay. But yeah, man, we're living in an all-out collapse of this system. 
is crumbling. Okay, and it's and it's real beautiful to watch because, hey, just like it says in Sirach, you know, in Salaki, I'm, 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 I'm rambling. I'm just trying to bring out everything I remember from the film and link it with the scriptures. This is Sirach 25 and 7. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy, and the tenth I will utter with my tongue. A man that have joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemies. Okay? So, man, no matter the the affliction, the hell you're going through, don't allow that to make you lukewarm. You know? Because we're actually witnessing the fall of our enemies, and it's a beautiful thing. Okay? Movies like this. You know, we're able, we're able to watch it with a spiritual eye and filter it through the scriptures. This is shit like this is coming. Okay? And we can't, this movie don't do it enough justice. Us reading the scripture ain't going to even tell you how bad it's going to get, man. And it says a time like no other, so it's going to be worse than when the Babylonians came, and, you know, and took over Jerusalem. Okay? And, and Jeremiah had to flee to Egypt. It's going to be ten, a million times worse than that, man. Worse than the time of the Maccabees. Worse than the 70 AD. Worse than chattel slavery. Worse than 1492. Okay? Worse than Tulsa, Oklahoma. Niggas gonna get bombed out here, man. Alright? Yeah, but anyway, you know, they end up going to the bunker. Okay? And the reason why they're in this bunker is because the uh, the the male the head owner of this bunker whose name is Hunter, which that's spiritual, which Esau is a cunning hunter and a man of the field. That's how he's described in Genesis, right? And his blessing is the uh, <clears throat> his blessing is the sword. You know they have this uh, bunker and they really don't want to let Jake in, but they end up having to go back to there. Well, they didn't have to, but the wife wanted to after the house was broken into, man. After the house was broken into, they went and pretty much, you know, supplanted their way in. You know, Jake Yaikoop, <laughs> you know, it's just in Jake's nature, supplanted their way into the uh, bunker for food and shelter. Okay? But, you know, it also shows you the clash between Jacob and Esau. You know? Because Hunter and Greg, who pretty much represents Jacob and Esau, didn't get along for shit. And he ended up kicking... Greg out and keeping his wife and his and his and his daughter. Okay, and his baby, but he kicked out kicked out Greg and, and his uh son that he adopted, man. You know? And that's pretty much, you know, I'm all I'm gonna speak about. I'm not gonna tell you the ending and and everything. Like I said, if you wanna check it out, you know it's a good port to watch. It is free. If you have Amazon Prime. You know? But pretty much it just shows you what the times that we're living in, man. There's a saying, it says, art imitates life. Okay? One day, shit, you're going to wake up and shit is going to be fucking, all right, on fire. This second edge is 16 and verse um, 37. Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. As when a woman with child in the ninth month bring it forth her son, okay, and it was spiritual because there was the uh, hunter or the guy who owned the bunker. His wife was pregnant, okay. Uh, it's spiritual, man, because right now what what are we experiencing? Signs in the heavens, blood moons, solar eclipses, earthquakes, pestilence, famines. All of these are likened unto birth pangs, okay. As when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son with two or three hours of her birth, great pains can pass her wound and great, many great miseries, great pains are coming upon the, the earth. Okay? Which pains, when a child cometh forth, they slack not a moment, and these plagues are, they're increasing. They're increasing, they're becoming more and more frequent, and they're happening a lot more and closer together. Okay, even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn, and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. And that's what's happening, man. Okay, got the uh, famine here. 
<coughs> drought there, trucker shortage here, you know, you know, the issue with the gas prices, okay? They're telling you look for blackouts. They're telling you this winter over 100 million people could have the, uh, you know, could have, you know, the C word, man. <clears throat> but yeah, you know, that's pretty much all I wanted to bring out. I'm going to uh, end it there. All right, through the spirit. You know, I pray that this was edified. As I said earlier, man, you know, repent. Okay, because the kingdom of heaven is not. But with the kingdom of heaven to come, this place has to be destroyed and it's going out bad. Call all your law, your hawa, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors unto our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, Wakasai, Wabarakim. Peace, mercy, and blessing to the elect. Shalom.